be baking our first sourdough bread loaves. I have been waiting for this day for weeks, preparing my sourdough starter, watching videos, and I have never baked sourdough bread before, so I am so excited for this. I have been working on my sourdough starter, but I think that we can finally bake with it. It has been doubling in size after our feedings, and if it doesn't work out, it's okay because it's our first time and one thing I know about sourdough is you just do it and if it's a fail, it's okay. You just try again and you will one day learn all the little things. So I just wanted to bring you along on baking my sourdough. So let me tell you a little bit about my sourdough starter. My very first sourdough starter that I made, I made with cassava flour because I wanted to make it gluten free and it didn't work out the best because it didn't have that like stretchy texture of you know gluten flowers and it didn't double in size or have many bubbles it did have a few bubbles i will say that but it was just not not really working because it's not the traditional way of making it so if you were wanting to try baking sourdough let's try this together I want to learn together and we will figure it out and if we fail it's okay we're gonna figure it out and I'm just gonna go ahead and say a fail is not really a fail because you can usually figure out another way or make something else with it because sourdough starter you can do a lot of things with that so I'm going to try to do two different flavors in the loaves I'm a little like hesitant about adding flavors on my very first bake but I think that we can do it. We're just gonna try it. So yesterday morning, I fed my sourdough starter and then I let it rise all day. It doubled its size and then I made my Levain, Levon, Levain, I don't know. However you wanna pronounce it. I think both are correct, so we'll just go Levain. So, but I made the Levain, it sat overnight it rose a little bit, which is why I'm kind of a little bit worried about making it because it didn't double, but I'm wondering if it has something to do with the temperature or if it's because my sourdough starter is not strong enough, but we're just going to try it anyway because I just feel like you just got to try it and just go for it. And if it's a fail, it's okay because we can still learn from it, but the sourdough starter is, is that a month old? I think it might be a month old, or maybe almost a month old, but it has been doing really good. Comment down below if you want me to do a full video on how I made my sourdough starter. It is very happy. It is not really, very, it's not very active at this moment because I just fed it, so it, it's not really bubbling or anything yet, but as the day goes by, it just grows and it gets those bubbles and it just a very happy sourdough starter. Another thing about sourdough starters is it said if your sourdough starter is doubling in size after you feed it then that means it is ready to go 4 to 12 hours after I think. And sometimes it can be up to 24 hours depending on the temperature of your kitchen or home but I think my starter is ready because it has been doubling. And another way to tell is if it floats so you take about like a tablespoon I think and some lukewarm water and if it floats it's ready but I also have heard that that test is not the most accurate I'm not really sure but it says that the doubling test is more accurate than the float test but anyway let's make our dough I have my Levain over there and it is ready to go and I think we are ready to make our dough so I have a large bowl here and we're gonna start with our flour, and this is bread flour. And then I also have my water here, and this is warm water.
looking a bit rough, but as the process goes on, it gets smooth. you let it rest first to help the gluten develop so we're gonna let it rest and then we'll come back for our stretch and folds and then we'll move on from there the next step is to make a salt mixture of salt and water and then you add this during your first stretch and fold so that's what we're gonna do then I'm gonna be using pink salt pink Himalayan salt for this then we'll do 20 grams of water. All right, so our dough has been sitting for an hour. We have our salt mixture ready and I'm going to do our first stretch and folds. And I'm going to explain this to you because I do want to say that this was one of the things that kind of confused me. So let me show you here. Here's our dough. I'm excited about this part. I've really been looking forward to really getting my hands involved in this. It smells very sour and like a dough. So one thing here, we wet our hands, so I'm going to do that. All right. And wetting your hands just helps it not to stick to your hands. So what we do is we're going to add a little bit of our salt at a time. So I'm just going to sprinkle it. What you do is you take it, reach the bottom, you stretch it as far as you can without it breaking, and tuck it over. Wow, that was my very first stretch and fold. I love this. So then you go to the next section and stretch it out, tuck it in right there, next, and then you're just basically making a full circle. And this is where I kind of got confused because people would say, do four stretch and folds. And I would think, so do I go around it four times or do I do four stretch and folds? That makes sense going around four times but so you just go in a full circle and once you reach a full circle that's when you stop so you just stop it where you started and this by stretching and folding this is what creates those holes <laughs> nice big holes in our dough so there we go that should be good. And then you let it rest in between each stretch and fold. So this is our first one and then we have three more to go. stretch and folds and now it is time to let the dough rise for about six hours and I'm going to add this piece of tape so we can measure how much it rose. So I'm just going to add it about where the dough is. 
right in there. All right, so I'm gonna shove y'all. And you can use like a marker, erasable marker, whatever you want. I'm about to take a look at my sourdough starter. It has been rising for about three hours and it's got an hour and 30 minutes left. If I'm doing it for five hours, I may have to do it for eight hours. I'm not sure if it's risen at all yet, but it is currently in the oven because my mom was cooking earlier and the oven was still a little bit warm. So I decided to go ahead and throw it in there while it was, not throw it, but put it in there while it was still warm. So let's take a look. It's risen not even an inch. I'm a little bit worried about it. I think it may just be too cold. Yeah, that's gonna need a lot longer. I need to figure out how to keep it warm, but I wonder if I can still bake it even if it doesn't rise. So my dough has not risen much more, but I'm just gonna go ahead and shave it anyway, and we're just gonna, we're just gonna go for it. I'm not really sure what to do, but we're just gonna try it. And so basically what you do here is you just spread some flour out on a board or your counter, whatever you would like. And then we're just going to dump it all out on the board. And yeah, and I also have some flavor here that I'm going to try to add to it because it's supposed to make two loaves. So I'm going to do one plain one and then one jalapeno cheddar. So that's the loaf flavor I'm going to go for. And we're just going to try it. And yeah, so here's our dough. It is looking a little bit better. I don't know. But, yeah, comment down below what y'all think I should do. So, let's flip it out. Okay, it's, like, not coming out. I think it's supposed to be just coming right out. Okay, yeah, this is looking very, very sticky. Oh, no, it's just... It's going very flat. Alright, let's try to shape this. Okay, this is looking way too sticky. This is majorly sticking to my hands. Wow, it's not staying in any shape at all. And here I am from a few days later to explain what went wrong in this sourdough bread process. So while I was in the middle of shaping my loaves, my camera battery lost charge, so I did not get to finish filming the whole process. And also at that point, I was just like, this is not how it's supposed to be. It is not working. So. I was just like, okay, we're just gonna forget this video because I wasn't even going to finish the process. So what I think went wrong here was, number one, it did not finish the rising process. So that is the main thing that went wrong because it did not double in size. And also I think that because I wasn't just using straight sourdough starter, I was having to make a Levain, or Levain, however you say it, but I was having to make a Levain to add to the dough. So I feel like it wasn't as strong to help the bread to rise. I was like, I don't even know what this is going to turn into, but I just did it. And I'm glad I did because it was definitely a learning process. And for my first loaf, it was okay, but I'm going to keep explaining what happened from there. At this point, I was not going to add the jalapeno cheddar because I was just like, I don't even know if we're going to be able to eat this. So I just did not add the flavor to it. And I still haven't done it yet, but we're gonna try it very soon. So I shaped it the best I could. It was just falling flat, like it would not hold any shape and that's not how a the right dough is supposed to be for sourdough. And then the next step, so you just put a dish towel, whatever you have, in a bowl and you sprinkle some flour on it so the dough will not stick. So that's what I did and this dough was very sticky. It was sticking to my hands and it's not supposed to be sticking that much. So I knew something had definitely gone wrong. The next step was to let it cold proof overnight and then you bake it in the morning. So cold proofing is basically where you put it in the fridge and let it sit overnight. And that's all you have to do. You just wrap it up in plastic wrap or whatever you have. So the next morning, so I pulled it out of the fridge and it had definitely firmed up a little bit because it had been in the fridge all night. So then I turned it over onto a piece of parchment paper so I could transfer it into the Dutch oven when it was ready to go. But the first thing that you do before that is you score it. So 
while you're scoring it. You have the oven preheated with the Dutch oven in the oven to heat it up really nicely. So I did the score design where you do an expansion score, then you do little slits and to make a pretty design. So the next step is you transfer it into the Dutch oven and you bake it. So you bake it with the lid on first for several minutes to kind of steam the bread and get it all cooked on the inside. Then you take the lid off and cook it and that gives it the crispy browned outside. And one of the things is if the dough did not rise long enough and properly rise that it's not going to get that brownness on it. When I was scoring it, it was just expanding just into a flat thing of dough. It was not even working how it was supposed to be but I just did it anyway. I was like okay we're just gonna bake it see what it turns into. So it turned into something. It was a flat loaf of bread with like the weirdest shade of brown I've ever seen for a piece of dough. So once you pull it out of the oven you're supposed to let it cool and that just kind of finishes up the cooking process on the inside by letting it cool. So I was just like okay is this even edible at this point? So I just cut into it about maybe like an hour or two later and it definitely had the large holes on the inside and it was definitely something but you could just tell that it was just not like a proper sourdough loaf. We each tried a little bite of it but we did not eat the whole thing because I'm I was kind of hesitant about us eating it because it was not properly risen and you know all the things. It did taste like sourdough bread it just didn't taste like the I don't know how to explain it but that's not the end of the story. So that day I was like okay I'm going to try this again and I did a totally different recipe. I made the dough and I wasn't filming this because at this point I was still thinking okay this is probably I don't know how this is gonna turn out but I just tried it anyway so I made the dough I let it sit and I did the stretch and folds I let it rise and this time it actually rose and I was like okay this might work and by the time it got to shaping it actually held its shape and it was such a different texture and I was like wow this is actually gonna turn out. I let it cold proof in the bowl overnight and then in the morning I scored it. Speaking of scoring it there's so many designs and patterns you can do and when I was talking about this to my mom I was like I don't know what to score it with like do I do like a sharp knife or what do I do and she surprised me with like an actual scoring tool and it was such a nice surprise because it made it so much easier and i will link my score in the description box you just have to be very careful with it so oh 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 we have some visitors we have some visitors two little visitors have i ever properly introduced our dogs on my channel i don't think i have this one is our little rescue her name is rudy she's my dog i got her when i was Five, about to turn six she was an early birthday present for my parents so she is the sweetest dog she is gonna be 10 years old next year which is so crazy and then this is our little Westie his name is Rascal this is my sister's dog and he is so sweet as well we've had him for even longer he's gonna be 13 next year I can't believe that it's been that long but anyway not to get off on a totally different subject. Let's get back to the story. So anyway, I scored my bread. I did the same exact design that I did the day before on my other one. I baked it with the lid on, with the lid off. So I just kept baking it and it started turning brown a little bit at a time and I was so excited. And I pulled it out of the oven. You could actually see my design that I did on it and you couldn't see it on my last one so I was like wow it actually looks like a real sourdough loaf and I will say it was a little bit tiny it wasn't a perfect circle but it was a true loaf of sourdough bread like it was actually browned and it had the nice design on it that I did and I was so excited I let it cool for several hours so I cut into it and we all tried it and it was so good it tasted like real sourdough bread and then the next day after that my mom was like we need to put some 
almond butter and banana and honey on it and make like a little toast for a snack and she made it and she made it the best way it was so good so we all had us a little slice of sourdough and i think that that about wraps up this video i wasn't even going to post this but i decided why not but anyway i think i'm gonna end this video here this was just my first time and i know i'm still learning and getting better but each time i bake it i know it'll be a lot better oh and by the way I also wanted to say for the recipe, I was going to share the recipe that I was using at first, but I decided not to because it didn't quite turn out for me. So I decided to change recipes on the second loaf. And I kind of want to make up my own recipe that I will share with y'all very soon. And also, if you were thinking about making sourdough, I highly recommend it because it was such a fun process and i enjoyed it so much and if you want to see how i made my sourdough starter comment down below and i may make a little video on it but i cannot wait to see y'all in my next video and i will see you then bye bye